Hey there. I've stopped by this old van. It's not just your regular old van, and that's what made me want to shoot a video of it. This old Dodge van is wider than the rest of your typical Dodge van. See the extensions here? So we're going to talk to Rady. He's traveling with the Graham Cracker on YouTube. Tell me about your van. Well, um, this is a 1997 uh, Dodge B3500 wide one. Um, they were manufactured in Canada and then shipped to a company in Anaheim, California called the Wide One Company, and they're no longer in business, but they made uh, uh, ambulance, uh, transportation vehicles for uh, like cities and um, um, limousines, that kind of thing. This just happened to be a East Valley Metro Transit bus from Phoenix, Arizona. And uh, I found it in, um, Brainerd, Minnesota, and uh, I bought it primarily because it didn't have any rust, and then I got to looking at it and thought, oh my gosh, what room we have. So um, I picked it up there and converted it, and now it's a camper. Um, I did see recently that the wide one also made a Class B camper van, and those are extremely rare, but I didn't know they made those. Wow. And that one was nice. Anyway. So how can you tell if it's wider? Well, when you come out front here, most of your Dodges, I would say all of your Dodges, the headlight and the, and the uh, grill touch. They're clear over. This is six inches. And then we got another one on the other side, six more inches. And then they've taken the bumper. Now, my generator's in the way, but they've taken the bumper and they've extended it in the middle. Put a piece in. I'll be darned. So they used all the original parts and it extended it. And then on the interior, the dash goes over to right about here. And that's your standard dash. And then they added an extra piece on that end. And I wish they would have added a third wiper because right in the middle here, the wipers don't even touch. I'll be damned, I can see the spot there where, yeah. where there's no most, most of these, the older ones, had a split windshield right down the center. This is, this is the only one I've seen so far that doesn't have a split windshield. And I've only seen three other ones. One sitting here in Quartzsite and it's being used for storage. One up in South Dakota and it's running off straight propane. And then the final one I saw, well, the other one was in Washington and then there was one more that was painted just like this. The other, the other ones were white. Wow. But this still has some of the etchings of like the handicap on there. Right, right, right. In the sun, you can see that. But um, up here under the hood, now I don't know, they didn't move a whole lot. I mean, your standard Dodge ended here, okay? That was it. Right. And they added all this space. So all this is standard. It's all the same. The engine's in the same spot. The motor mounts are in the same spot. However, some of your drivetrain down here has been extended and moved around a little bit, and I don't know a whole lot about that. But uh, okay. I do know that the motor is really in the same place. It's just added. <laughs> they stretched her. Yeah. It's a lot of work. Yeah, and they and it's clear back. Most of your wide bodies, people go, oh, I have a wide body. The wide bodies were extended um, six inches, three on each side. Some, some a little over six inches, not quite a foot. Um, this one is straight back, all the way back. Right, they're usually stretched starting behind the cab back. Right. And it's, it's a fiberglass body. Right, yeah. Right. This is a whole van's been cut in two or mm -hmm. in three sections and widened. Right. Yeah, all of this is steel. It's not fiberglass on this side. Right, it's just um, Dodge sides, yeah. On the other side where the uh, handicap door is, that's fiberglass. The rest of it's steel. Right. So they cut that uh, handicap door out. Um, we have the barn doors in the back, and then uh, the handicap uh, ramp door on the other side. You mind if I look underneath the front end? Sure, go for it. I mean, they went through a lot of effort to widen this thing. Yeah. You can see underneath there where they pieced in the core support piece in with a foot of metal but this frame your frames are typically 30 some odd inches apart and these damn frames here got to be 48 inches apart five five feet apart even so uh, this is one of the last ones um, I'm assuming Phoenix had a fleet of them and they let them go in 2007 because they kept their fleet for like 10 years 
and then when they sold them all out, people converted them or did whatever. I just right. haven't seen a lot of them. I'm gonna look underneath the back real quick. Yep. Oh man, that makes room for a huge fuel tank and you've got a pretty big fuel tank, don't you? 35 gallons. Oh, that's it? Yep. Well, I guess 35 is still pretty big. Good size. But you can see where they cut the frame. And they, um, and they added a, a section to it. Wow, that is, that is unusual. But when you do get close to it, you realize, holy shit, that son of a bitch is wide. Right. Uh, we have a full-size bed in the back from side to side, and I still have eight inches of head, head space okay. for a, a cabinet back there. You want to show the inside? Yeah. Is that all right? start right here. Okay. I mean, they, they used all the normal Dodge parts. Yeah. They, but, you know, that's got to be an expensive undertaking. That had to have been. You know, they didn't, I don't know how long they lasted, but I have tons of storage under here. Okay. The bed's up, I put the bed up higher, but from here over right. is is headboard. The bed stops right about here. Okay. All the way over to the other side. So it's huge. It's just freaking huge. Yeah, you could put a California King in there. Almost. <laughs> not, not quite. Not party quite. wagon. Yeah, party wagon, you're right. Um, this used to be the uh, handicap accessible panel here, and I turned that into shore power. Okay. I have batteries under the floor now, and then this compartment where the ramp was, I have all of my uh, cables and hoses and things like that hide under there. So okay. that works really good. Yeah. We're in a travel mode right now, so everything's put away to Let's get out of here. Oh, look at the, the buffet. Yeah, I found this at a uh, antique store. Because I was looking for something that had drawers and uh, the cabinets. Right, right. Because I wanted my counter. Okay. And this is five foot of counter. And I've seen a lot of people put their stoves in drawers. Mm -hmm. I don't know why. Why not do that? Mm -hmm. And then you cook right there and you still have your counter. You don't have yeah. to take it out and put it up. Why not put it in a drawer? Sliding drawer, yeah. Yep. Yep, yep. Okay. And then uh, this is only 18 inches deep instead of your standard 20 inches, so it gives you more space in the middle. Right. Because I use a wheelchair and I wanted to be able to get in here and move around if I need my chair, right. and I can. Um, I see a good use of space. Yeah, I used everything all the way up to top. And you don't I have a problem with the jars there. flying up? up? Nope. Really? Mm -mm. They've been up I like here this. Look at that. Three years. The nets. Yeah. This is pretty handy. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. If you see it, you'll use it. If it's put away, you won't. <laughs> uh, yeah, I like things where I can see it. Yeah, <clears throat> I yeah. think my wife would prefer have things where she can't see it. And these these here, nothing dings, nothing bangs. So I don't, I don't right. have noise when I'm driving down the road. Um, we have a bathroom. Um, All right. And then there's a shower underneath. And I can pull this little box out and my shower pan's down oh, here. Oh, wow. And, and then the shower pan comes out in the room, and then this whole shower curtain comes out, and I now come you got like shower. a shower spigot up positive. No, there. I'm using a pumper, okay, pumper spray. But I'm going to put in a um, system in between the shower and the refrigerator that's like a um, pumps it back through the filter system, right. so I can get an extended shower. I've been doing some research on how I need to do that. They, are they able to filter it good enough to wear? Yeah, they use a three filter system. Right. And it, uh, I think it goes 20 microns, then 10, and then 10, and through the different types of filter. Okay, yeah. okay. That that sounds like something I'd like to have in my motorhome. Yeah, it's um, just a recirculating shower with heat in the water. And All right. Then, then I got my full refrigerator that runs off of my 400 watts of solar and my four golf cart batteries. Okay. So that's runs And this. that's a 120 volt though, right? Yep. Fridge? Yeah, just a Magic Chef, uh, five and a half cubic foot. You know what you're pulling on amps? Uh, it's a 60 watt. I don't know the amps. I think it's 0.5 or do you have, 5. Do you have like an MPPT controller for your... Okay, and you, do you have a battery monitor system where you can watch how much it's pulling? No. no. Okay. I, I know uh, by with the um, inverter, it's uh, 60 watts of power coming out, and that, if I remember how they did the math and all that, comes out to like 5 amps. Okay. But this runs a lot, because every time you open it, you know. Sure. So, and then... Uh, it, how many watts of solar again? 400. 400, okay. And yeah. four T105 golf cart batteries? Yep, yep. Okay. And then I built this. I yeah. do not suggest plastic. I had to reinforce it. Okay, a little flimsy? Yeah. If I okay. built it again, I would not put in the plastic. Good use of space. Uh, I guess it's a composting toilet. 
It is. Okay. Well, I call it a dry toilet. Okay. And I keep the uh, stuff I use right here. Okay, so all this, yeah. Mm -hmm. I used uh, coconut core for two reasons. One, cat litter doesn't hide the odors. It okay. doesn't dry out the waste. And uh, peat moss molds. So coconut core dries How things out. How hard is out. it to find? Not hard. It's in pet stores everywhere. Okay, okay. You just... Lizards use it. <laughs> all right, using all right. It's lizard stuff. You got big old bunk. I didn't use cabinets because I wanted to see. Like I said, I want to see what I got. Plus, the vans like this and putting in cabinets. If you look at this, I had to go through all these little bumps and crooks and crannies, and there's windows everywhere. And all this is fiberglass. Right. Putting in cabinets is just not not possible in here. It'd be a pain in the butt. There's a light bar back here about that wide that I was able to screw these or rivet these into that light bar so I know I wasn't coming out the roof. Okay. That's the only reason I was able to put overheads okay. which helped. Um, but the rest of it's all fiberglass. Okay. So this is glued. The pegboard, the boards behind it are glued to the fiberglass and then the pegboard is screwed into the boards that are behind it. Okay. So I have that gap you need for a pegboard. How long have you had this place, this thing set up? Oh, well, let's see. We're in year three. The leather bridles that got to do with your dog? Yes. Jake. Looks like you're a horseman there for a minute. No. Jake is in a, a mobility assist dog. But that's for helping you? Yeah. Okay. He helps me walk. He helps me get up and down. He helps me. Uh, well, he's a good I boy fall. then. He's yeah. a real good boy. Yes. His birthday Sunday, he'll be 10 years old. 10? Jake, you're getting to be an old man. He is getting to be an old man. But he's a working old have man. Have you had him for 10 years? I have. I wow. Got him when he was 11 weeks old. And, uh, I went to uh, Bergen University Canine Studies right. and got a degree in service dog education. So I came back from there and uh, started a business in in Park Rapids, Minnesota, Triple M Assistance Dogs, training mobility assistance dogs okay. and diabetic assistance dogs. So where is home? Well, home's on the road. Uh, yeah, where was where was home? Um, I've lived just about everywhere, but for the the last. Home base was uh, Park Rapids, Minnesota. Minnesota, then. Yeah. I bet you're glad to be gone from there. I liked it. It's cold, though, ain't it? It is cold. <laughs> I sold my house in 2015 and hit the road. And I have not... Uh, I've gone back once or twice. In, uh, and when Minnesota. you say we, you're talking about you and Jake? Yeah. Okay. Me and Jake. <laughs> He's, we're partners. Absolutely. You know? Me and my cat are we. But George isn't with me. He, yeah. he stayed home. Well, a lot of people, you know, say, well, that's my dog. I'm their master or I'm their parent. I'm not his parent. I didn't birth the dog. Right. Uh, and I'm not his master. And they treat the dogs like yeah. they're their parents. Yeah. 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 Our, our motto for our service dogs is where dogs don't serve masters. They assist partners with manners, go. mobilities, and miracles. Okay. Yeah. Right. Thank you very much. Thank you. We'll look you up. I'm, I'm really glad I was able to catch him.